every president, every party has left their fingerprints on the state of our immigration system today. The Reagan administration's amnesty policy drew widespread backlash and still gives some conservatives pause today. The Bush administration had its faults. The Obama administration struggled to handle a spike in migrations amid mass deportations. But at the moment, the current administration is separating families from their children at our border with Mexico, not because of a law, but because this administration has chosen to do so. So far, despite nearly 2,000 children being separated from their families, what's missing from this story are a flood of images of these young children. It was images of children, after all, that spurred the president to change course in Syria. So far, this young toddler has become the face of this policy. Stop and look at her for just a moment. And remember that there are thousands, thousands of other faces that we have not seen. That's in part because cameras have been granted such limited access to the facilities where these children are being held. Let's go live now to MSNBC's Jacob Soboroff in McAllen, Texas. Jacob, you have been one of the very few journalists allowed to see one of the facilities where these mi migrant children are being held. Tell us what it is that we can't see. So, Casey, this uh, building behind me is nondescript, but it's, it's probably the epicenter of this entire conversation that we are having. This is the Border Patrol Central Processing Center in McAllen, Texas, called Ursula. And inside there, right now, there are 1,200 detainees and more young children have been separated from their parents inside that building uh, as their parents leave the building than anywhere else along the southern border. And that is because this sector, the Rio Grande Valley, sees more apprehensions, more people trying to cross illegally than anywhere else. And inside this building today, we got inside uh, with another group of journalists uh, for the first time. And uh, what we saw, frankly, uh, is as shocking as everything else uh, that we have been seeing. And I want to be really clear. What's happening inside that building in terms of people being detained inside cages, and by the way, we weren't allowed to bring our cameras in, but we were given handout photos uh, from Customs and Border Protection, and maybe we can show you some of those if we have them right now. People have been detained inside buildings like this in this building for a long time, but this is the first time since, uh, this is the first time ever that children have been separated on a systematic basis. Look at those photos right there uh, from their parents, and that is because of the Trump administration. People in here are locked up in cages, uh, essentially what look like animals. Uh, kennels. I don't know any other way to describe it. And strangely, the Washington Post gave Senator Jeff Merkley what they call three Pinocchios for saying the kids were locked up in cages in here. That's exactly what I saw today. What's different than what was going on in this building during the Obama administration is the systematic separation of children from their parents under this zero tolerance uh, policy. And in this sector alone, there have been over 1,100 kids separated from their parents since the policy uh, began. We know 2,000 since early April across the entire southern border. So it's a massive amount coming out of here. Uh, in this building, what happens is parents uh, get ready to leave the building and they don't know if they're going to ICE family detention with their children or if they get to bring uh, their children with them uh, or if they're going to go to the courthouse and get charged. And ultimately, they're basically given a piece of paper. They're taken to the courthouse. Their children are left behind here. Uh, and they don't know uh, when they are going to see their children uh, ever again, frankly. I don't think that, um, you know, they're supposed to call this phone number and figure out the details, uh, and that's something that's supposed to get explained to them. But there is, there's a big mess going on right now, and even the Border Patrol inside this building says they're overstaffed, uh, they don't have enough resources. Uh, the system is just getting stressed out because the Trump administration decided to put this into place, uh, and the consequences really haven't been worked out. And, and the biggest consequence of all is thousands of young children in in a way that has never been done before, taken from their parents. And when you hear the Trump administration say, this has been done before, this is a Democrat policy, uh, this is not unusual, uh, that's BS, frankly. Jacob, were you able to talk to any of the children in the facility or, or get a sense for, for what it was like uh, for them? And, and, and how, how quickly, is there any warning for these people? I mean, you said they're just handed a piece of paper. What, what dictates what's on that piece of paper? I mean, how, is, is it, I just, I'm stuck on this idea of how terrified people must be walking up to receive whatever piece of information is going to tell them whether or not they're going to be allowed to stay with their kids. Yeah, there was, a, there was a mother in tears there today as the group of journalists sort of came around her because we were asked not to talk to people inside without the permission of, uh, of Border Patrol. And there were a couple that we were 
able to talk to. The idea is by court order, they have to be out of here within 72 uh, hours. And uh, these, because it's sort of a hodgepodge of rules and regulations coming together um, right now, they're trying to get people out of this facility as fast as possible. If the parents are going to be charged, they're trying to get them either, they're trying to get them over to the federal court as fast as possible. They're trying to get the kids out of here as fast as possible into facilities run by uh, health and human services. But these scenarios are coming up that we're finding out about where a parent, for instance, might be charged. And by the way, the Trump administration, again, wants to charge 100% of the people that come into this country illegally. Right now in this sector, they're saying that that number and the separations are around 40% with the goal of charging everybody. There are scenarios where a parent might leave go to the federal courthouse, be charged and sentenced with time served, come back to this building behind me, and their kid's already gone, and they're already into the HHS system, and then they don't know how to find their child, and they don't know when they're going to find their child, and they don't know where to find their child. And so there are these inconsistencies in the way that this is all playing out that's just making these terribly painful and irrational situations that seem like they could be put together in a way that, that just frankly makes more sense. Jacob Sovaroff, live in Texas, uh, thank you so much uh, for spending your Father's Day to bring us uh, this story here. Great reporting, and I'm sure we'll talk to you again soon. I want to welcome my panel here with me on set, the founding president of Voto Latino and MSNBC contributor Maria Teresa Kumar, Pulitzer Prize winning White House bureau chief for The Washington Post and MSNBC political analyst Philip Rucker, and NBC News intelligence and national security reporter Ken Delanian. Uh, Maria Teresa Kumar, I want to start with you uh, on this story that we started uh, off uh, with Jacob. There has been a lot of dissembling from Trump administration officials, mm -hmm. uh, but as Lindsey Graham said uh, in the last couple of days, the Trump administration could stop this with a phone call if they wanted to. Absolutely. This is a decision, actually, that was formulated when John Kelly was head of DHS. He basically he threw it out there, and then it stuck. And Session literally put it into play in May. This is something that he can not only do overnight, but then also let's look at Mitch McConnell and let's look what over at Paul Ryan. They also have a legislative calendar that they can control. There are two pieces of legislation right now that they could also basically say they could end it today. But something that we need to underscore, all the 90 percent of these individuals right now that are being charged, they're being charged with a misdemeanor. In April, the Supreme Court ruled that immigrants can be held indefinitely without bail. So it not only is it messy, but it's almost aligning to ensure that these individuals are incarcerated for as long as possible, and they're doing it for things that actually, for, for misdemeanors that actually do not make sense. The extent of this cruelty is an un unimaginable. They've also been reporting that in, in, in San Diego, even siblings have been separated, and they, could only, they can only see them, each other once a week. There is no rhyme or reason for what's happening. What we're experiencing right now at the border is not normal immigration patterns. It's not for economic reasons. These are refugees. And I would like to remind the yeah. American people that we said the, we set the standard. We actually crafted the human rights laws that right now the rest of the world practices. Last week, the UN said that what we're doing to children is in violation of their rights. Mm -hmm. Philip Rucker, uh, what's going on behind the scenes at the White House around this? I mean, it, on the one hand, you have officials like Jeff Sessions who's going out there being very, very clear. Mm -hmm. The president is out there blaming Democrats. Melania. Which is not true. Which is not true. Right. Very important. Not true. This is, again, a Trump administration policy That's that they exactly. could stop with a single phone Correct. call. Uh, Melania. Trump is saying that we have to have policies with heart, quote unquote. You can see her uh, statement there. She believes we need to have a country that follows all laws, but also a country that governs uh, with heart. Where is the president on this and whether this should continue? Well, it's this weekend it's become a real uh, political crisis as well as a humanitarian crisis that threatens to spiral out of control for the president. Uh, he said Friday, he talked to reporters Friday on the North Lawn of the White House and said he doesn't like the policy of separating uh, children from their parents, and he blamed it on Democrats. That's not true. It's not the Democrats' fault, as we've said. Uh, and the White House is grappling with, over the weekend, how to deal with it, and there's, they don't have an easy answer for it. Kellyanne Conway, counselor to the president, really struggled on Meet the Press earlier this morning uh, to defend this policy. She said, as a Catholic, as a mother, uh, she doesn't like to see what's happening there. We're hearing more and more about what's happening inside those detention centers, like with Jacob's report. Uh, my colleagues at The Post had a story this weekend about a, a young girl separated from her parents in tears, very emotional about it, and the 
workers, the relief workers inside the detention facilities are prohibited I read that from, story. from counseling that any of these children. They're not allowed to touch the kids, not allowed to hug them, not allowed to comfort them. Yeah. I mean, this is a real problem for the White House to deal with. And we have Tuesday the president planning to go up to Capitol Hill uh, to meet with Republican lawmakers there to try to come up with some sort of legislative solution. Uh, but he wants more than just a fix for this particular policy. He wants funding for that border wall. Yeah, Ken Delaney, and I mean, the other, the other piece of this, a couple pieces, the, the Homeland Security Secretary, Kirsten Nielsen, has reportedly been very frustrated with this behind the scenes. But of course, in public, we showed her tweet earlier where she says, we don't have a policy of doing this, right. yet they are doing it. And also, frankly, the facilities, our law enforcement is going to get overwhelmed pretty quickly by, by the sheer numbers. Mm -hmm. And, and what she meant is that it's not their policy to separate kids. It's their policy to have a zero tolerance policy against immigrants and to arrest everybody crossing illegally. And you know what? There's a lot of people in the Trump base that support that. Because it is true that most countries around the world have a much less generous immigration policy than we do. And there's a reason these families from Central America are not stopping in Mexico. They're going to our border. But most Americans are not on board with this cruel and punitive policy that stems from current law of removing these children. And if that's the only way that you can arrest everybody, then you just can't do it. That's what Kirsten Nelson has been saying behind the scenes. Mm. Joining me now to talk more about this, Deputy Majority Whip and Republican Congressman Tom Cole of Oklahoma. Congressman Cole, it's good to see you uh, tonight. Thank you, you for being here. I want to show you uh, some of the remarks that uh, your colleagues, Republican colleagues in the Congress have had to say about this uh, topic we've been discussing, the separation of children uh, from their families at the border. Uh, first, uh, Paul Ryan, the House Speaker, and then Senator Lindsey Graham. Take a look and we'll talk about it. Are you comfortable with the um, current zero tolerance policy leading to parents and children being separated at the border? No, I'm not. Uh, this is because of a court ruling. Mr. Speaker, on that point, this is actually a policy change from the Trump administration for zero tolerance. And there's also a court ruling involved. So this is something that we think should be addressed. Religious leaders have come out and said that this is inhumane. Do you agree? We don't want kids to be separated from their parents. President Trump could stop this policy with a phone call. If you don't like families being separated, you can tell DHS stop doing it. Congressman, should the president make that phone call and stop this policy? Well, I certainly think we shouldn't be separating young children from their parents. But uh, they, frankly, in this case, if you want asylum, you can go to any embassy in any country and seek it. Uh, and we'll adjudicate it there. You can come to a port of entry and it'll be dealt with there. And again, you wouldn't be separated from your children. If you cross the border illegally, you run that risk. Uh, frankly, we have surges like this. We had them during the Obama years. I actually had hundreds of young children uh, held in my district at uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, ranging from ages 8 to 14, uh, they but were the well Obama treated, they were eventually sir, placed. Like they, they specifically uh, grappled with this question about whether to separate children from their families, and they decided not to do it. And that's how we ended up with well, many of these family I, I, actually, detention actually, centers. Actually, Casey, that's not exactly true. When I'm looking at an eight-year-old kid, which I saw in my own district, that person wasn't with their parents. Now, I, they may have been separated because they traveled alone, or they traveled in a group, or they were with somebody else. Uh, so a lot of these cases are not actually involving the separation of the parents. It's, it's a dangerous thing, and discouraging people from traveling thousands of miles where they can be exploited and preyed upon and where they run great physical risk uh, is the right thing to be doing. Now, we're going to have hopefully an opportunity this week to address this legislatively and fix it. I agree with Speaker Ryan. This is not a policy we want to pursue, but I have a lot of sympathy with border agents that are confronted with thousands of people uh, and you know don't have any easy recourse as to what to do with them. Again, we've housed children for a lot of years. I've seen it myself under multiple administrations when we get these summer surges. Well, at the same time, I, I, I take your point, but I do think it is it is very dis distinct and different to have unaccompanied minors crossing the border by themselves than to have people arriving at these detention centers. You mentioned legislation, though. Comprehensive or, or if not comprehensive, then certainly more sweeping immigration legislation has failed time and time and time again in the Congress, trying to grapple uh, with so many of these issues all at once. If, in fact, this compromise legislation that you all have talked about fails to pass the House, would you support a narrow immigration proposal to end this separation of families at the border? 
I would. I, I'm not for separating young children from their families. Uh, but again, you have to understand the, the sheer scope of what we're grappling with. And frankly, I would hope people that are concerned about this would make sure our borders are more secure uh, and that we follow the president's four pillars, which I still think are the most sensible way to deal with some of the problems that we have. Uh, in terms of comprehensive legislation, that's probably not going to happen. I frankly much prefer dealing with things in several pieces of legislation. I think we'll have that opportunity this week. I hope our friends on the other side of the aisle help us, and I hope Republicans, uh, you know, again, are supportive of what the president's trying to do in terms of securing the border. The president hasn't been 100% clear on this compromise bill. It's been quite muddy over the course of the past <laughs> few days. Is your understanding that he would sign this compromise legislation if it were to pass? That's my understanding, and, and I get your point. Uh, I was confused myself on uh, on Friday, but I think the president gave an impromptu press conference and may not have understood the question. Frankly, he's been a pretty busy guy between North Korea and the G7 summit, so he may not have been fully brief. But he's going to come and visit with us on Tuesday, and I think uh, we'll have an opportunity to see where he's at. It's my understanding that he would support either of the two pieces of legislation uh, that Speaker Ryan's uh, planning to present to the House. But again, the idea that we can solve it in the House in a day, not true. Anything we do has to go through the Senate, has to be solved by the, the or signed by the President. So if you want to deal with something, it needs to be bipartisan, and you need to have both chambers and the executive branch on the same page. Given that, the time it takes to do this, do you think the president should make that this phone call and stop family separations until you can take legislative action? I do. Look, I am, not, I am not for family separations under any circumstances, uh, but I'm also not for catch and release. That is, I wouldn't just release the population either. Uh, frankly, we're on the verge of being overwhelmed in the border. We've had this before. We were overwhelmed when President Obama was there. And as I said, we had lots of centers with young children, eight, eight years or and younger in some cases, uh, you know, on their own. It's not a good situation. I would hope parents don't put uh, their children in that situation, but certainly if the parent is there, the child is better off with the parent. Congressman Cole, thank you very much for coming on to play ball with us tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank I'll see you. you on the Hill later on this week. Thanks. Maria Teresa Kumar, your reaction to what the congressman said? Well, a couple of things. Right after the surge took place in 2014 with the president, you, if you recall, Vice President Biden went down to Mexico and actually crafted something with, Mexi with the Mexican government saying, how can we actually prevent this coming? Because they saw the surge coming. So they were working very closely with the Mexican authorities. We are so on the wrong side right now with the Mexican government. The Mexican government is not cooperating because we well, have nothing in place. Well, the issue is also not necessarily people from Mexico because there are different policies no, no, in place. No, no, but, they were, but it, was, it was part of the, that migration. So they were basically sure. providing providing different places to stop and actually provide people relief. The challenge, though, and I think this is what the American people have to recognize, is that if you are a mother or a father and you are traversing literally three to four countries to get to the border, how terrible is your situation? It must be so terrible that you actually are willing to risk your life. When he's saying now, when he's mentioning, to your point, Casey, that he said, when he is mentioning that you found a lot of unaccompanied minors by themselves, it's because an eight-year-old was put on a bus and said, go that way because it's unsafe here. Yeah, and, and it is a much different situation. Oh, absolutely. At which the Congress well, and we are actually, and we're well. actually right now, in, in, in the overall picture, this idea of mass migration to the United States, we're actually at net neutral. That is actually not the case. These people at the border are not your common immigrant. They are refugees. They are fleeing violence. They are fleeing desperation. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.